Hey, what's up everyone? It's Mark again, here to work on a Vespa. First off, you probably, if you saw the last video, remember me saying I was going to clean the garage? Well, believe it or not, I did. It exploded again. I've been working on the Vespa here. I actually rode it to work once. I got about a seven or eight mile drive to work, and it was a miserable ride. It wasn't idling the whole way. It was running like crap. I think I got it running. The main thing I'm in the middle of doing right now is getting the electrical system gone through. I hate the electrical system on these, well, really most motorcycles, scooters, anything, like up through the 70s. They're all just kind of clunky. I don't know, not very high tech, not very precise. And you know, that's fine. They just wanted it to be kind of simple, cheap, and robust but we have a lot better technology available now. So I've been doing some of that. The other thing I wanted to talk about too, I got a big order from SIP in Germany, got some of their products, and I just kind of wanted to go over it because I put some pictures on Instagram and people were asking, what'd you think of this? What'd you think of that? So I'm gonna go over that real quick. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing with the electrical system. And I'm teeing up another long-term project that might take me forever to get to the conclusion of. So. Here we go. Okay, first thing I want to talk about, talk about the best news first. These are SAP Scooter Shop premium cables, and they are freaking amazing. I love them. They claimed in the uh, marketing wank that they were redesigned, they were thicker, and the linings were better, and all that, and I was like, okay, I'll give it a try, and they are great. I mean, granted, I have, what, about 15 miles on them right now. But there's like no squish. They're just tight. They're responsive. So far, keeping adjustment great. The liners are great. They're slick. There's no binding. They're awesome. It's like the clutch is just like... It has never been that easy. So I am sold. Get these cables. Period. Don't think about it. Don't debate it. Just get them. Okay, the next thing everyone wanted to know about was this seat. Uh, I don't remember what it was called or the number or anything, but I will flash it across the screen now. Ta-da! So this was the original seat. The upholstery was completely destroyed. I went to the store to pick up some black vinyl, and I saw the furry leopard print, and I couldn't turn it down. So I upholstered that about 10 years ago, and it works fine. Instead of just being like a fun rally vehicle, it's now a daily driver to get me to work. And fuzzy leopard print kind of isn't the best when it rains. So I ordered this one when I got made my big order from SAP. And I guess my review of it is it's a seat. The price was right. As far as daily driving goes, I think it's fine. If this were like a really nice restored scooter that I wanted to like have pictures of in magazines and stuff, uh, the fit isn't great. Here's the gap from the back. And I could adjust that maybe, except the lever is tight here, so even if I were to lower it down, then where would that go? Looking down on it, you know it's got this big square toe, like one of those weird shoes. But then you see that it doesn't fit the contour of the scooter at all. Totally hangs over, looks weird. You can see daylight underneath the whole seat. Oh, and again, this is the, the flat gas tank too. I don't have the, the extended capacity one that the Rally, I think, came with. But when I got the scooter, it didn't have a gas tank. The brackets, it comes with kind of this weird retrofit bracket for this purpose, which then kind of like raises it up a little. This tube that the pin goes through was welded crooked when you sight down there. It's kind of hard to see on video. But trust me, so I quote fixed it. I basically just like, I grabbed the seat and just sort of like bent it over to the left and just sort of like made it level. Because otherwise you just look at the back of the seat and it was just like visibly just like tilted to the right. So I bent it to my will, but it works. I mean, it lashes, it's comfortable enough, it fits, and the price was right. If I wanted to spend, you know, twice as much or three times as much on a seat, I probably could have got something that would look better. But really, you know, for the price for a daily driver, I'd buy it again. It's fine. The other shining good news was this... Uh, glove box, lock, and column lock set. They're great. I've never had a lock on the glove box before, so sometimes I'd just be idling and it would just vibrate open, so now it doesn't do that. I can park it at work. 
not worry about people going through here grabbing tools or running off with the scooter. So that's nice. A bit of advice if you want to replace this, I'm not sure if there's anybody else that talks about how to do it. This pin comes out, so that requires some sort of pressure from the back side on this plate, and that pulls this brass pin out. Then the lock cylinder, you'll have to either drill it out, I picked it, twisting to the left, and set each pin. Pulled the cylinder out, snapped the new one in, that rivet's what holds it in, so. It wasn't too bad, it took about 10 minutes, and I now have a key for both of those. Of course, the original key up here is a different story. It's not even cut, but I'm working on that. All right, the other thing I got in that order is this tail light. This is the cheap one. I didn't even pay the extra dollar for chrome since the scooter was ratty looking. I thought that would look out of place. But this is the cheap one, but it works. So there's not much else I can say about that. If you, you know, looked at it and looked at the price and were like, I don't know, is that a piece of junk? Um, no, that's fine. It's a tail light. I also got some Pirellis. Not much to say about those. I can't really give any opinions on long-term wear since I've got 15 miles on them, but uh, they're better than dry-rotted Shinkos. All right, now moving on to the grand event. This is what I was tinkering with yesterday. So here are a couple different versions of this diagram. Um, this one's from scooterhelp.com. This one's from scooterlounge.com. It looks like kind of a mess, but if you start erasing things like turn signals, that my bike doesn't have. Turn signal flasher. You know, there's just some things that aren't relevant anymore. It looks a lot simpler. But essentially, what the goal is in redoing this, first, I want to integrate turn signals into the taillight without having the big, ugly American spec turn signals. If you're not familiar with the American spec turn signals, it was these things that would stick off the back and then also stick off the front somehow. I'm not sure exactly how. They look stupid every which way you put them. But I got a few of those with the scooter, but not all of them. So I'm integrating a Arduino-based taillight, turn signal, brake light combo. So to run that, I need to have a nice, steady, constant voltage source to power the Arduino. So the scooter puts out, and I'll put up a couple pictures, just right off the stator, it's putting out a really ugly waveform, like well over 40 volts peak to peak, and that's enough to blow out most electronics. If I just go through a bridge rectifier and a capacitor, just like a simple DC conversion, I end up with just over 20 volts DC. You know, you burn out taillights and everything else that's supposed to be 12 volt. And this is a six volt scooter, so I'm kind of trying to stick with that because that's also a good voltage for the Arduino. But I can't have spikes and things because it's going to be a lot more delicate. So this is just a cheap DC buck converter from China. These are like 10 bucks. Nothing special about that. I don't think it's going to hold up well to vibration, so this is kind of a temporary solution for testing. But it's doing a great job of giving me a perfect rock solid DC voltage. It doesn't fluctuate with throttle or anything else. I got a potentiometer here. I can adjust it, fine tune it anywhere from like 20 volts down to just a couple volts if I wanted. So let me show you the tail light. All right, so this is the prototype. So first of all, picture that there's probably gonna be a couple more rows of LEDs. And each one of these represents a vertical row of maybe six LEDs or something. So what you'll end up is just there will just be an array. I haven't built that part of it yet because I haven't ordered the LEDs. Basically picture inside the tail light here is just going to be a bunch of rows of LEDs across here and then probably a horizontal row down here that'll just do tail light and also shine down here for the license plate. It'll probably also get brighter when you hit the brake. Picture this is a grid of vertical lines. So when you hit the left turn signal it will do that. And over here, this represents the indicator on the dashboard. Dashboard. That's a dumb way to put it. This high beam indicator right here, I'm going to put in a RGB LED so it can show me. It'll blink red for turn signal. It'll turn on blue when the high beam's on. And I can just basically program any functionality into that I want. So, I mean, if I wanted to just have it flash like a disco strobe when I start it up, I can do that too. So, we got left turn signal, and then the right turn signal, the opposite of that. And then the brake, I'm still working on 
Rather than just have it come on, I kind of like how some of the modern bikes, it kind of flashes first to sort of get the attention of the vehicle behind you. So I've sort of like integrated that, but I'm still working on it. I'm teaching myself how to program, so, you know, just add that to my list of hobbies. But that's where that's at. And of course, all this, plenty of room to be mounted in here. We got good seven volts coming off that, and this will run on a wide range of voltages, including seven. And that would also charge a small SLA battery that might be useful just for when I'm at idle. And back up here to the dashboard, as I called it, I already explained what I'm doing with that. This, I think I'm gonna end up replacing and just having an on-off electrical key switch. This has three positions, and one of the positions is writing with no headlight and no taillight, which I don't see as necessary. I feel like it should always be on. So I'm probably gonna replace this with just a two-position key switch, preferably keyed alike to that lock and that lock, but I don't know if that's gonna be possible. And then I'm gonna make new switches here. As you can see, the turn signal switch is broken. The thing you're supposed to activate it with is gone, so it's really hard to move. These switches, I'm not even sure if they're available. If they are, they're very expensive. They're kind of an oddball. Only used them for a couple years. But we have high beam, low beam, horn, turn signal, engine kill. I'm planning on making new ones, and I'm going to have a horn button. I don't know if the horn's ever going to work. Mine does not. A high-low switch, a turn signal switch, and an engine kill switch. I might end up adding a button or two with wires to the back just so I can add other functions later on. Maybe things like push the button and it'll make like the, it'll dim the speedometer and the indicator light. So, you know, if it's too bright at night or too dim in the day, you can adjust that or, I don't know, any number of things that are real easy to do in software. And the headlight, again, it's another kind of weird oddball headlight. It's got these brackets built into it. I haven't been able to find much of a replacement. So I've already got it gutted apart. It's electric tape back together. I've got the lens I can take off and I think I'm going to take out the filament and turn it into an LED bulb. Try to maintain the original look because I hate how LED bulbs look. And yeah, that's the scooter project. In future videos I'm going to be working some more showing how I put together the tail light showing how I make the controls, all that stuff. But for right now, it's just kind of an overview of where I'm at and a discussion of some of my parts from SIP. I realize I just about ended this video without actually showing the thing working. Yeah, so since I don't have my fancy tail light hooked up yet, I just have a little homemade LED bulbs that I threw in there just because they suck less power than the incandescent bulbs. So there you go. Now you know it actually works. Thanks for watching.